It's story time with Jocelyn and the second week of October and we're going to do a really nice fairy tale that includes a witch today. And I'm so excited to use this edition. It's very pretty. We are going to be reading The Brothers Grimm's Hansel and Gretel. And look at this and how pretty it is. And you can see reflections. <laughs> you can see double of me. And we're gonna be reading it. It is very pretty. And this is the Michael Nurbenberry edition, and it is illustrated by Sybil Sacknicker. So here we go. It is really pretty. Once upon a time, as all fairy tales begin, near a great forest lived a poor woodcutter with his two children, Hansel and Gretel, and their stepmother. When things were good, they had little enough to eat, but when famine came to the land, the man could no longer provide their daily bread. One night as he laid in bed worrying Jocelyn, he sighed to his wife. What is to become of us? How can we feed our poor children when we have nothing to give? You know what, husband, she replied. Early tomorrow morning, we will take the children into the forest and give them each a morsel of bread. We will leave them there and they will never find their way home and we will be rid of them. Mm. Look at how pretty that is. I wonder what's in that yellow window. Let's find out. No, wife, I can't do that. How can I leave my children alone in the forest? Wild animals would tear them to pieces. Then we will die of hunger, she said. And she kept talking until at last he gave in. The children heard what their stepmother and father were talking about. What shall we do? Wept Gretel. Don't cry, Gretel. I will save us, replied Hansel. Mm-hmm, look at that. That was a stepmother, I guess. At dawn, even before the sun had risen, the women came and woke the children. Get up, you lazy things. We are going into the forest to gather wood. Then she gave them each a small piece of bread to eat. Then they set off into the forest. As they walked, Hansel dropped breadcrumbs onto the path. Smart boy. The woman led the children deeper and deeper into the forest than they had ever been in their lives. Their father made a fire to keep them warm. And the stepmother said, just sit here children and rest. We are going further into the forest to cut wood. And in the evening, we are all done. We will come and fetch you. That is a creepy forest, huh? This edition is so beautiful. Evening fell and deepened, but no one came for the poor children. They awoke to the darkest night. Hansel comforted his little sister saying, just wait until the moon comes up, Gretel. Then we'll see the white breadcrumbs I dropped and they'll show us the way home. Very dark. When the moon appeared, they looked for them, but the breadcrumbs were gone. For all the birds of the field and forest had eaten them. Hmm. We will find the way all the same, said Hansel to Gretel, but they did not. They walked the whole night and the next day from the morning till evening, but they did not come out of the forest. I know, Jocelyn. Are they going to find their way home? Mm. 
Next day was the third morning since they had left their father's house. They began to walk again, but they kept going deeper and deeper into the forest, Jocelyn. If help did not come soon, they would surely die. At midday, they saw a lovely little snow white bird sitting on a branch. It sang so beautifully oh, 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 that they stood still to listen to it. Can you see the white bird? It's right there. When the bird had finished, it spread its wings and flew off ahead of them. They followed it to a cottage where it perched on the roof. Look at the cottage. When Hansel and Gretel came closer, they saw that the cottage was made of bread and roofed with cakes and the windows were made from sugar. We can have a feast, said Hansel. I want a piece of the roof, Gretel, and you can have some of the window. As they began, a gentle voice called from the inside. Nibble, nibble, munch and munch, who is chewing on my house? An old, crept old one, woman, oh dear, my children, whoever brought you here, come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. They took them by, she took them by the hand and led them into her cottage. There she served them a good meal milk and pancakes with sugar, apples, nuts, and sweets. Mm. Afterwards, two soft little beds were made up and Hansel and Gretel lay down in them and felt as if they were in heaven. But the old woman, Jocelyn, was only pretending to be kind. She was a wicked witch who lay in and waited for the children and she had built her cottage of sweets so as to bring them to her. Whenever she called a child, she killed it, cooked it, and ate it. <sighs> Witches have red eyes and cannot see well, but they had a good sense of smell like animals and can tell if people are near. When Hansel and Gretel had come into her part of the forest, she laughed wickedly, <laughs> saying, I have them and they will not get away from me. <laughs> Early the next morning, as she looked at the children lying there so peacefully with their soft pink cheeks, she murmured to herself, oh, they will make a tasty meal. Then she grabbed Hansel with her skimmy hand and dragged him out and shut him in a small kennel. Next, Jocelyn, she went to Gretel and shook her awake. Get up, lazy bones, fetch water and cook something for your brother who is outside in the kennel to be fattened up. When he is fat enough, I will eat him. Gretel began to cry bitterly, <laughs> but it was no good. Oh. Ooh. Isn't this a beautiful addition? Each morning, the old witch crept out to the kennel and called, Hansel, stick out your fingers so that I can feel how fat it is. 
Instead, Hansel held out a small bone. With her dim eyes, the old witch thought it was Hansel's finger. Just a small little bone. She was amazed that he didn't grow fat at all. After four weeks, four weeks had passed. She was overcome with impatience and would wait no longer. I've heated the oven, said the witch to Gretel. You crawl and see if it is hot enough. But Gretel guessed what she had in mind. How can I get in there? It's too small like this, you silly goofs, said the witch. She hobbled forward and she stuck her head in the oven. Gretel gave her a hard push and slammed the iron door. The witch began to howl dreadfully. Ah, ah! But Gretel, Gretel ran away and the wicked witch was burned to death. Gretel ran straight to Hansel, opened his kennel and cried, Hansel, we are free, the old witch is dead. How happy they were. They hugged each other and danced about. Hand in hand, they went into the witch's house. In every corner, there were chests with pearls and precious stones inside. Hansel put as many in his pockets as they would hold and Gretel filled her apron full. Now we must go, said Hansel, so we can escape this witch's forest. After walking for a few hours, they came to a lake. Gretel called to the white duck. Duck, duck, help Hansel and Gretel. There's no bridge or no track. Take us on your little white back. The little good creature did so, and after they were safely across and had gone on for a while, the forest began to look more and more familiar. Finally, from a distance, they recognized their father's cottage. They began to run, rushed inside, and fell into their father's arms. The man had not had a happy hour since he had left his children in the forest. His wife had died. Gretel shook out her apron so that the pearls and the precious stones rolled about the room. And Hansel drew out one handful after another from his pockets to add to them. Then all their troubles were at an end and they lived happily ever after, Jocelyn. Yay! <laughs> Beautiful. And they are together again. Hmm. <laughs> That's it. That's the end. And that was the me and an edition of Hansel and Gretel from the Brothers Grimm. Wasn't that pretty? And there's always a happy ending to a scary story when it comes to the children. So I hope you enjoyed that. And we will see you next week for another special cool creepy fun story for October theme for Halloween. Trick or treat. Bye-bye.